Hi, I'm Andrew Ko, uh, working for the creative team at Italia, and currently working on uh, Tommy Driver. And today, I'm going to talk about the status of Tommy Driver developments. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with contents for this presentation. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about what Tommy Driver is about and then uh, the history of development for this driver uh, especially focusing on what's, what's achieved at last year and then finally uh, I'm going to talk about the plan for this year okay here we go what's TURNIP? Um, TURNIP uh, is the code name of Qualcomm Arduino GPUs Open source Vulkan driver. It is a um, reverse engineer driver. You know, as you know, uh, Qualcomm delivers uh, uh, their own proprietary driver uh, for Vulkan and OpenGL on ARM architecture, especially for Android, as you know. But there also have been uh, efforts to provide um, open source GPU drivers, Turnip, by, by reverse engineering. And Turnip is a part of uh, uh, these efforts. Um, and I'm going to talk about the history a little bit more in the next slide. Um, and Turnip is being actively de developed in this community. That is a, a open source project for the graphics uh, implementations of OpenGL and Vulkan for various GPUs, and that is serviced on the desktop gimlet for now. And you can you can find you can find the link in, in this slide, and you can visit it. Contributors. Uh, especially to Tonic, um, people working for Galia, like me, and people working for Vivi, and working for others. And I think I can have a chance to mention these brilliant people uh, later in this presentation. So, let me talk about the history before 2021. Uh, first of all, I have to mention Freedrena that was created by Rock Club around 2012. Uh, that is an um, open source OpenGL driver for Qualcomm Arduino GPU. And he's been developing Freedrena since then and he kept improving the drivers. And nowadays, it's it's almost the same as uh, proprietary drivers, as I heard, you know, which is great. And his works um, have, have affected Tony because Tony shares a lot of uh, kind of uh, free infrastructures uh, like uh, um, compilers and DRMs and such things. The Vulkan driver development started in August 2018. At that time, Tony became a reality. Um, when Igalia started contributing to Tony at the beginning of 2020, then from the from that time, we targeted uh, Adriano 630 and 650 GPUs. And as far as I remember, um, Tony was usable already, but um, lacked support for many Vulkan extensions and features, uh, which are required by uh, you know, real, real world uh, graphics applications. Um, which means that there were a lot of things to do. And to be honest, uh, performance was not good. And now, uh, no, uh, for 2021, Tonic was 
dramatically influenced by very talented people. As you see the names in this slide, they are brilliant and very well known in the community. And I want to say thank you for all, all of these people. So now I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you about what's achieved at 2021. First, we implemented lots of vulcan extensions. As you see in the slide, um, the two key implements for kind of extensions. Uh, first, we need to investigate into what proprietary drivers are supporting on Android. Um, this is the, the point. This is the point where, where we start to implement new extensions. And it's like, um, you know, first we got the whole list of supported extensions on Android by, uh, via a proprietary driver and one of, we picked one of them and, and we had to get a dump of a common stream for the extensions and analyze them and and implement it in turn based on them. Uh, is that is the way to uh, is, uh, to uh, reverse engineer? And this kind of reverse engineering is uh, generally hard and make people sometimes crazy and sometimes even happy when you when you find something new. But um, this is how Tony driver is being improved generally. And also we did uh, a lot of bug fixes that were found by Vulcan Citizens and Piggly and other this kind of test suits. And as a result of these efforts, Tony including me. Uh, implemented uh, Vulkan extension implementations. Uh, Tonic got finally Vulkan 1.1 conformance for Linux 6, 8, and GPUs uh, last uh, November, which which is a great job. And last thing is um, we we tried uh, to make it run for Windows games with Direct. Uh, DXBK and or VKB3D on Linux ARM that requires uh, x86 emulators. And we have seen some in those games running. And in this way, uh, we are able to fix some bugs in the driver that have been, have been existing in the driver. Um, which cannot be found by uh, just by running test suits. Um, that's why this is important thing regarding uh, driver development. Now um, let's talk about the plan this year. Uh, I think we can keep working on it to improve many things. Especially, uh, we start. We are going to start focusing on real-world use cases like uh, uh, playing computer games on Qualcomm devices running on Linux. Mm. Um, actually, we we started around last year, uh, la uh, at the end of last year, uh, and we, uh, as I said. Uh, we have seen some window games running already, but we still try. We 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 will keep trying to run window games. But um, there are a lot to go. Uh, most important thing is that uh, there are still not enough many games running on ARM architecture as we know. Uh, that's why we. Are trying to run more Windows games instead. 
this is also important because um, you cannot wait for games running on ARM architecture for a long time. I mean, we have to do what we can for now. So, uh, running running window game is a good way to see the status of the driver in in, in new world use cases. So that's why we we try we are trying to run window games even even with the uh, emulators, which is bad. I know. Next is performance. Um, performance is always key thing for driver development, and it's always tough and hard. I know. And we have to do uh, reverse engineering more and more to to improve something and to figure out something unknown. Um, it has been always tough, but we have to. Keep going. Um, another big thing is uh, new generation GPUs have come uh, called uh, Adreno 7 Access, maybe. Um, this should be exciting because, uh, as far as I heard, um, uh, they may start supporting. Um, shining features like the um, mesh shaders and ray tracing. So this will be very interesting for us when we get in driver development too. And last thing is is also worth mentioning here. That is, uh, uh, there are still unknown instructions, which means we have to do more reverse engineering. To figure them out, uh, I guess most of them are useful for uh, compute shaders, um, but that is not our main focus for now. But uh, I know we need to do it sometime. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Hi guys, welcome to the Q&A session for the Trinity driver development status. Um, after threatening our users that I'm taking Zoom hostage to ask him some personal questions, we did have some questions. So let's start with the first one from Matt. Yeah? Um, have there been some particularly difficult things to reverse engineer or implement in the past year? Yeah. Um... Yeah, as I said, uh, as I said uh, in this presentation, um, yeah, all everything is tough when when you're a uh, reverse engineer, and and I I think I think I can choose one thing that I, which is that um, uh, uh, when I when I work on on, on FP sixteen support. On, on Friedrich, not Balkan, though, but uh, uh, when I was working on uh, FP16 supports, and I have to figure it out how Hadeo is working, and, and that was very tough and, um, for, for about, for about uh, as far as I remember, for about uh, three months or more, I I am investigating into the uh, proper uh, how proprietary driver is doing for for fourteen point sixteen support and yeah that was that was very hard uh, hard thing in in this development history and yeah that's all. 
what particularly blocked you from uh, getting further with this support? Anything particular, anything interesting? Um, yeah, I mean, 14.16 uh, supports is the hardest thing for Why? me. Uh, because um, um, uh, we have to know uh, to to do to support that. Uh, we have to know how registers in the in this hardware uh, are doing. But we have no documents, and we are totally blind about that. And so we have to uh, uh, investigate into uh, uh, what prop proprietary driver is doing and, and by uh, doing doing uh, uh, running some examples on Android and. And dump the uh, dump the total uh, uh, overall uh, uh, commands stream stream commands and analyze them, and we have to figure it out uh, uh, which registers are supporting uh, sixteen bit or or not. And yeah, that's all. That, uh, this kind of thing is uh, horrible and yeah, that was that tough. Uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, I don't hear you. Look. Of course not, because I was muted myself. Um, uh, yeah. So a question from Eric, uh, which is probably for his own use, as he's actually also working on Proton last I heard. Um, so I've noticed is what he says, VK valve mutable descriptor type on the support extension list. I thought it's mainly for Direct3D12 implementation on top of Falcon. Do you know where that, where there is a re any reason for getting it implemented? Uh, is there any use for it on the ARM world or was it just for free? Yeah, um, because there are some efforts to, to run indoor games on ARM, ARM devices, including Arduino devices, um, uh, Qualcomm devices, I mean. Um, and I heard that uh, some people trying to do that uh, have been have been through a very hard time. So uh, I heard that, and and they need uh, this 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 extension is necessary for running their uh, components like a uh, BKD three D or or DXBK, which is uh, to run. Uh, uh, window games on Linux using Vulkan. And, and so, and, and, uh, this, this extension is not that hard to support it because, uh, 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 basic things to, to support this extension is already done, uh, at the moment. So, yeah, so I, I decided to kind of expose this extension support. So, yeah. That's not that easy, so yeah, it's it's not it's not hardcore to work on this extension. Okay, then the final question is from Adrian, one of your colleagues, I think. Yeah. Uh, does Zinc uh, work on top of Turnip? If not, are there any plans to make that happen? Yeah, yeah, Zinc, yeah, Zinc is uh, as Adrian explains, Zinc is to run uh, OpenGL. Uh, applications on top of Vulkan, and of course we have already uh, tried to make it run, and I think I think it generally runs fine with Jink. And you have to uh, you have to confirm uh, uh, when you ha when you want to confirm it, uh, you have to run you have to install a, a sixty eight uh, eighty six emulators and. And, uh, maybe, uh, DXVK and, and Qualcomm devices. And, and there, there are very, uh, a mess of, uh, setup you need. So it's hard to, uh, hard to set up all, all, all kind of, uh, uh software stacks. Uh, and, and there is no documents about that. But I think we have to make, we have to write, uh, official documents to run. Run something like that, yeah. In fact, because it's very uh, interesting thing for for uh, gaming people. So, 
Yeah. yeah I, 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 my answer is it runs generally. Yeah. Oh, that I don't hear you, so you work. Me and muting, right? Um, yeah. So uh, thank you for, for all this. This is the final question we have from, from our uh, users. Um, is there anything you want to still add to your talk or anything you want to still talk about? Anything that you might have missed when you recorded um, your talk? Um, no, but um, yeah, it's, it's great experience okay. to, to present this thing. Right. Uh, have you ever been to a live FOSDEM then? Have you had the no. chance to join FOSDEM when the world was still okay? No, okay. it's the first time. So since you're working for Egalia, and Egalia has a, a, usually a, a big presence at, at FOSDEM, at least in the graphics dev room, then I hope to see you there next year in, in the flesh. Sure, sure. Okay. I hope so too. Then thanks very much, and see you Thank next you. year. Bye-bye. See you. Bye.